All right, we've started. Uh, <laughs> welcome everybody to encounter number three. It's the third session of our uh, beginning biblical Hebrew course. I wanted to open up today a little bit different and ask, um, I want to take like at least 10 minutes just to field questions because uh, we need to make sure that we've got um, we've got everything that you know, all the bases covered before we move forward. Today's uh, today's session is going to cover a lot of uh, a lot of issues that we that we need to know before we start reading. So um, let's start with that. I'm going to sit here and wait for you guys to ask questions if you have any, and then we'll uh, we'll field them as they come up. I'm not sure this is a question you can directly answer, but I'm the fact that the Kirek and the Kibbutz can be either long or short is kind of confusing. Okay. Um, I think we've got a, like a whiteboard thing here. Let me see. Um, basically, let's think of an, an example. Um, we learned this week about uh, open and closed syllables, correct? So this is taf, sure. pe, lamed, a. Um, forget, there's a but, there's a thing in there that just popped in there. It wasn't intentional. A dot. How do I get rid of it? They don't have any eraser. There we go. Okay, so this is tough. T, fi, that's an e, la. What we have here is the lamed doubled with the uh, dagesh. So this is if we want t e f or a p with a line over it. I l l a, fila. This syllable here is closed. Because it's the syllable is essentially this. Okay, it's ju it's essentially this is the syllable. Um, when the syllable is closed and the accent's on the end, it's, the accent is not here. So then that syllable, the chirik is short. Okay, basically uh, closed unaccented syllables. We talked about it last week. Closed unaccented um, have. Uh, short vowels and long unaccented have long vowels. Okay, that's uh, the basic rule. So let's. I guess my, mm -hmm. my question was sometimes when, like the heat occurs on the on the first letter. Mm -hmm. That, just some cases, it was unclear to me. On the first letter, let's say. Trying to think of an example where it's long. It's more commonly short. Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. There's there are several examples in our uh, as we go through the the workbook, so that might clear it up as we as we do the syllabification. The, this is the word for circumcision, mila, with yod inside. You might by chance find it without yod, and this would be long. It would be long because the syllable breaks here. And the accent is on the end of the word, mila. So this would have to be a long chirik. Do you see why? This, yes. it's unaccented and the, the syllable is open. Because it's open, the vowel has to be long. So what it, it just means that kibbutz and chirik can be in syllables that are either open or closed when they're unaccented. That's all it means, really. So, so in the in the workbook, mm -hmm. uh, exercise three A, yeah, like on, on the first page, bottom right hand corner. Uh huh. It's um, <laughs> I want to say Greek sometimes. Bet uh, gimel dalet. With a uh, chirik and then a uh, in the gimel, you have a. Sh okay. okay, so it looks like this. This it's is this is ca it's kind of problematic at this stage because what you see is that this this shva does not cause the uh, the beged kefit letter to be hard. Okay, but mm -hmm. also this seems like a closed syllable. Big, big de, big de. 
We call this shva in this specific instance where it's both closing the syllable and opening the next one. We call this medial shva. Mm. Medial is it's got the characteristics of vocal and silent. So it, it both closes the syllable, which makes it a silent shva, and it doesn't contribute the uh, the dagesh to the next letter, the dagesh lene. So it's medial because it, it does both. It, it fulfills both duties. Mm. Mm. And it'll, they come, give, it'll come clearer, I guess. That's kind of a trick uh, trick question they gave you. This this basically appears in segolet nouns. Segolet, you recognize the word segol, like uh, this word beged, beged. It's e eh, e. Eh. Segolet nouns have, in their regular form, they have accent on the on the next to last syllable, beged. And they have segel here and here if possible. What I mean by if possible is sometimes there's a historically long vowel, so you can't like, um, you know, I want to give you the word gova. Gova means height. Uh, what we have here, it's accented on the first syllable. And also this ah is contributed from here. The a guttural letter tends to take patach instead of uh, segol. Um, but this is still a segolet noun. This is a historically long vowel, which means that it exists because that's where it was. I don't know where it came from. Um, because segol has come from different, different uh, like kodesh. That's a better word to give you, kodesh, holiness. Kodesh also has this, uh, that root o, like gova, um, but it also has a segol. So you can see that it's definitely a segolet noun. Um, so what happens with these ones is that whenever they go into the, the plural, like uh, beged, beged goes into the plural with masculine ending, im, and it becomes be ga dim, begadim. This is the pattern that it takes. So sefer, book, becomes sefarim. Sefarim is books. And gadim is clothes. This word here means clothes. Or garments. Um, but whenever you say the garments of someone, like the garments of the king or the king's clothes, like the emperor's new clothes, it becomes big day. Big day means the clothing of. Like this ending becomes a, and then there are some internal vowel changes so that it's big day. And we're going to talk about the, that in the next chapter. The next chapter, chapter four, isn't it four? Hold on. No, it's chapter five, excuse me. Chapter five deals with uh, the, the vocalic changes, the vowel changes uh, that nouns go through whenever they turn, when they turn into plural and also construct. So we'll get into that in two chapters. Um, but essentially like yeled, yeled means uh, a boy, child. Okay, when it becomes children of, it's yalde. Yalde hamelech. Also this shva here does not contribute, it, it doesn't contribute the dagesh uh, lene. And here you have a short vowel, so obviously this is a closed syllable. It form, it plays double duty, and that's a medial shiva. This is exactly the same form as big day. Big day is, ki is clothing of, and yalde is children of. Uh, so you ask a good question. Um, that they probably shouldn't have given you at this point, but they gave it to you, so <laughs> we kind of have to deal with it. Uh, does that kind does that kind of help? Yeah, it does. Cool. Um, okay, so I don't have any mm -hmm. specific uh, questions, but I'm, uh, despite having done a formal course in Hebrew quite a few years ago, I'm amazed um, how much I've managed to forget and the amount of detail um, that we're covering and need to cover. Um, yeah. Uh, 
hopefully it will stick better this time with the um, uh, emphasis we're about to come to on uh, pronunciation and reading and speaking sort of more of an oral approach. To yeah, I, I hope that it will all coalesce. Like right now, I feel like we're just taking a big pan and we're dumping everything we can into it. Uh, basically, we have to have some kind of base level to begin from. Once we have that base level, which is being able to pronounce things, you know, which is what we're working on, um, then we'll be able to move forward and we'll understand the concepts of the, of the next chapters. So if we have a three-letter root and we have a pattern of vowels that go with it, whatever they are, um, will it be able to break them down into syllables and understand how each syllable is affected by, by the changes that the nouns are going through, the verbs are going through, whatever. Um, I won't go into details on this, but this book covers a lot of interesting features of the, the of the theory behind uh, uh, the words and, and the forms that they take. So it's going to be a lot of information, but our goal is ever going to be reading. That's where that's where our eyes are going to be toward the text. So hopefully, uh, as we focus on that, you'll be able to to more easily uh, put things together and, and actually save them in your brain. Um, I've led a few classes in the past where I've tried to like just give the information without all of the reading, and it really doesn't stick. Um, and I imagine that might be what happened to you, that you got a bunch of information, you thought, okay, I'm, I'm grasping it, but because you didn't delve into the text of the Bible, it kind of just disappeared because you don't have examples in your head. You know? Something like that, yes. So the, the more you read, the more, like, the, the passages that we're going to have for basic memorization, you're going to have examples of all of these things that just sit in your head. And whenever you think, what is the Kamatz Katan? And you're going to think, ah, okay, uh, there's this example in Deuteronomy chapter 6 where it says, Vahavta et Adonai Elohecha bechol levavcha. And you say, okay, bechol. Bechol, that's an example of Kamatz Katan. You know, and so you'll have examples in your brain, and we'll we'll point them out as we go through, and memorize these things, and uh, that'll that'll help it stick for you. Good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anything else? We've gotten now to about fifteen minutes in. Should we go ahead and start looking at words, identifying the vowels, breaking them into syllables? Might as well. <laughs> All right, I put together this this, uh, this presentation of about 27 slides where we're just going to look at the word and we're going to do what we did in the workbook. We're going to break it into syllables and we're going to identify the vowels like we did in, in Chapter 2 and then basically pronounce the word and understand how it, how it fits together. So I'll do the first one as an example. Okay, so what can you say about the following? Well, we have one syllable at the in the very beginning. That's uh, be. Right there, be. The second syllable would be would break right there with the aleph. Um, I'm not sure if you covered it in your reading or what, but this aleph is called quiescent. Quiescent means it doesn't have a vowel on its own. It's basically a silent aleph. It doesn't have any value in pronunciation. So this is one syllable, two syllables, and then the third syllable is also here, and that's three. I would say that the first syllable is open because there's no consonant that breaks it. The second one is also open. The aleph doesn't really count as closing the syllable. There's no shva here. It's not uh, not officially closed. It just disappeared. So this is open. And the third is closed because it ends in a consonant, the consonant tav. So I've got open, open, close. This one is reduced. Reduced meaning it's shva. This one is long, and this one is also long, because the the chirk with the yod they go together. They make a long vowel. This is be in the beginning. Be second syllable is re, re, and the third sheet, sheet. Be re sheet. And saying it together, be sheet. Bereshit, which means in the beginning. That's the very first verse of our reading. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to write down the list of people as you uh, currently appear in my uh, on the left-hand panel for me. So Giovanni, and then John, and then Ward. Um, this way we'll take turns in that fashion, and we don't... Uh, I'm sorry about the noise, it's just we're having a thunderstorm. But uh, this way we'll take, take turns in this fashion. I'll mute my mic whenever uh, we're ready for the next person. Giovanni, your mic is currently muted. Are you here with us? Yep. All right, I'm muting okay. my mic. You are now muted. Um, sorry, I'm muting my mic and I'd like you just to take over and basically break it into syllables and let us know, is the vowel long? Is it an A, E, E, O, U? That kind of thing. Uh, explain what you see and uh, maybe how you yep. pronounce so, the word. Uh, the you are now muted. Okay. So uh, we have uh, mem and then another mem, lamed, and then uh, kaf and he. And then under mem we have uh, patach, which is a, and then we have a shava. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. And then we have a, a long uh, kamets under lamed. And then we have a uh, kamets also for kaf. So, so this is a shava. So this closes here for the first syllable and then here uh basically mamlaha mamlaha so uh, it's closed because of this uh shiva. I think that's how I, I get it because of this and and, and this one yeah and that's long uh, this is a, a short short one so an accented and then short oh, here's my note yeah so that, that's a close one short vowel an accented syllable so that that's uh, Close. It goes together. You Excellent now. and correct. Fantastic. So the patach indicates this is a short vowel, and oh, I can't. I don't mean to do that. Uh, sh sh the patach indicates a short uh, closed syllable. The shva closes the syllable, so that's closed. And then la cha. So how do you pronounce it again? Mamlaha. Mamlaha. And the accent is here, at the end. Mamlaha. Mamlaha. This, the root, just so you know, the root of the word, my pen isn't working, so I'm using the mouse, is mem, lamed, kaf. It's the same root, melech, king. So the mem prefix indicates the place. So this is mamlaha, it's the kingdom. The place where the king reigns. Okay, next word. This is for John, if you don't mind. I'm going to uh, go just take the first one, and then we'll look at the other forms and how they relate. Jason, before I start on that, you had some comments or questions for Giovanni. But the font was incredibly small. Mm. Is it possible to make it bigger or... I guess they were so small, I didn't even see it hardly. There How's you that? Ah, yes. And I'll change yes. the color, too, because I think the, the red is irritating. Uh, I'll go blue. Yes. How's that? And my... Good. Okay. And my mouse isn't writing. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I opened okay, it on one I'm slide, but it doesn't open on the next one. I don't know why. All right. There we go. So we got a you are muted. Close syllable here. 
So it would be on a lock. Closed, why is it closed? Ends with a consonant. Or am I just arguing in circles by saying that? <laughs> The um, vowel under the mem is short, and it's an unaccented syllable. Okay. You are now on That is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. This short vowel, wow, I can't, I got to remember to change back to the pen. Short vowel indicates that this is silent shva, and the syllable is closed because this is a consonant. Great. Um, this Syllable so here is it? Uh, hmm? It was pretty much the same as uh, exactly my word, right? Exactly. Yes, it's jails. So this is oh. open or closed? Closed. Closed. Is it long or short? Long. Long. The kamats is long. In this case, it's an accented syllable. Closed accented syllable doesn't have the restriction that we were talking about. How was my pronunciation? Say it again. Um, malak. Okay, you need to stop after the lamid. So it's not malach, but mal, stop, ach. Mal, ach. Mal, ach. Mal, ach. Yeah, mal, ach. It means, do you know what that means? No. Should do, probably, it means but. angel or messenger. It means angel or messenger. When you make the plural, the im ending is the plural, im. Malach is angel. Malachim, malachim. This is the plural. Breaks in the same place and it breaks here. Mal, a, chim. Hey, this means kings, or angels, excuse me, <laughs> not kings. Kings are malachim, malachim. These are angels or messengers. Um, this one means the angels of God. Any stab in the dark, uh, what you think, how you think, John, we might pronounce that one? Malachi Elohim. Okay, this... That's exactly right, except for just how to pronounce that K. It's not K, but Ch. Okay. Mal Achei Elohim. The angels of God. So the guttural K. Yeah, notice that the Kamats here dropped to a reduced vowel. But it still sounds the same. Mal Achei. Mal Achei. Okay. Next, here we are, Mr. Ward. We've got two words. Um, let me break the presenter open for you. Here we go. You are now muted. Let's see where I've got my pencil. Well, you say it now. So this is an accented syllable, so it could be short or long, but it's got a segel, which is short, and then a closed syllable with a short. But that's an unaccented syllable, so it'll follow the rules for short and long. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you are accent. Now I'm, say, I'm saying yes out loud, and I realize my mic was off. <laughs> yes, you disappeared. <laughs> chesed. Yes, chesed. Chesed is a complicated word to translate. It means something like loving kindness, faithfulness, like covenant faithfulness, love. Um, it's not a word that you use of your friend this, saying... Hmm? Is this... Kind of the root where 
Hasidic Jews come from? Yes, yes. The word, uh, the word for Hasidic, the it's called Hasid. Hasid. It's the same root. Um, uh, yeah, so chesed is like, um, if you keep God's covenant, he has chesed for you. Like it means that he, it's mercy and loving kindness. He will protect you and fight for you. Uh, and he will keep his covenant to you. Chesed. Uh, so whenever you say his, his loving kindness or his faithfulness, that's what uh, the ending here this ending means his. So how do we? How would we say this one? So we have. Um, this is not accented. So a short vowel here would mean this is a closed syllable. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I go here. Mm -hmm. um, has, hasdo. Mm -hmm. Hasdo. Mm -hmm. The accent is on the end. Has, has. Hasdo. Um, I, I, at the very end of this presentation, I put a, a verse that has this word in it, and we're going to look at it at the end. Um, it's the verse from the Bible, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. That's, the, that's this word here. His love, his loving kindness. Okay, next. Presentation is open, and we are back to Giovanni. We have here a couple of ways to represent the same thing. This is one. This is one. Um, the only difference is the presence of meteg. Meteg is a little indicator that it's like putting a bar right there, saying that this is an this syllable is open. It's open. It's long. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because sere is a long vowel and it's always long and there's no confusion, you will find it without meteg. You'll find it like this, without metag, and it's the same. When it's a long vowel, you can you can already know that the the, vowel, the syllable is open and that that shva belongs to the next syllable. So it's uh, that's basically the metag serves to uh, to indicate that the syllable is open. Uh, we will look at a couple of words in the next slide where this is more relevant. Uh, where if you have kamats, then it becomes super relevant to have the metag because kamats can be long or short. Uh, Giovanni, do you want to read these words for us? Pay special attention to the pronunciation of the kaf with no dagesh. Yep, so this is what I'm seeing from uh, the VHS. <laughs> so I'm kind of wondering, uh, I just know right now, mm -hmm. you pointed this out, that this closes here. So that's going to be yeleko. Yeah, ye le hu, hu. Ye le hu. Ye le hu means they will go. It's the future tense. Ye le hu. They will go. Uh, what about the second one? That it's built on this. It's built on the same word, so it's very similar. Yeah. So we have. Uh... You see that the, the, dif the difference is the addition of a vav with dagesh and patach. Yeah, so that's going to be... That's going to be vai lekho. So it's vai... Va ye le hu. Va ye le hu. It's u. Pay attention to o versus u. This is u and this is o. Va ye le hu. Va ye le hu. This va prefix, the va, v a y, represented with the dagesh. This vi prefix takes the future yelhu and makes it the past vayelhu and they went yelhu they will go vayelhu and they went. Uh, this is called vav consecutive. Vav consecutive. We call it consecutive because it it has consecutive actions in narrative past. 
this happened and then this happened and then this happened it's the the way that the 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 past tense is carried on in narrative okay how do we distinguish that from the word and it is the word and this is the word and okay yeah gotcha um but it's just by it's just what it, got it. it creates a chain of verbs and this happened and this happened and this happened and so when that chain is is, cre is created, it takes the future and turns it into the past. It will also take the past and turn it into the future. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into that whenever we get into actual the string of verbs in, in, in narrative. So next, what have we got here? This is where the meteg becomes important. John, it's your turn. I had a question. Is it possible to go back to the previous slide? Sure. Um, why isn't there a syllable break there? This is a, or mm -hmm. I'm missing something. Um, if there's a traditionally, break there, that's a schwa. traditionally the schwa is not counted as a vowel. It's it's a non-vowel. So traditionally, yeah. this would be a two-syllable word. Ye, lechu. This is a two-syllable word because schwa doesn't count as its own its own syllable. So ye is a syllable and lehu is a syllable. Um, so the lama and the kaf are just run together in yeah. pronunciation? And that's the vocal shva belongs to the next syllable. Um, the textbook that we're using, they actually do count it as its own syllable. Ye, le, hu. Um, that's not how I learned it. I learned the shva as its own, like it carries on into the next syllable. It doesn't open its own. So my natural inclination is just to break it there, and that's it. Uh, but if you want to break it here or there, that's fine. On the on the Moodle, on the online quiz, I made both answer, answers acceptable. Okay. okay. That's all clear? Okay. Good, good. All right, so now you got this one. These words look the same, don't they? Bethag there. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, you can't draw. There you can. Sorry. We got a. Um, that's indicating that this is confirming this is the comets, is the long comets. Yep, that's correct. The short one. Um. You are now muted. My brain seizes up. So oh, presumably a break there, and then oh yeah, is this the same issue as on the previous one? One could put a little break there, or not. Um. And then this looks like it's probably um, uh, Matre's Lectionis. The um, A goes with the comets. So to pronounce it, of la. Okay, so. What is what is uh, this one here? Uh, let's do that differently. Hold on, I've got I've got this box thing I can do. What is this one? It's by itself, right? It's one syllable. Ah, um, this is ah. ah. Ah, it's by itself. And then we could take this as by itself. Yeah. Ge. Ge. That's that. Uh, right, I was that looking. Sound? I was saying uh, bet. Ah, it's not um, a bet. It's okay. uh, it's half. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. And then this I'll is the last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it as big as I could. This is a hundred point font. So, <laughs> so this is oh, a, uh, g, la. That'd be very difficult without any vowel sound running that kind of 
guttural mm-hmm. sound jamming it onto the lamet. But yeah, it it does or, get it does get easier as you as you get used to doing ha ha ha. So achela achela means she ate. Achla. She ate. Yeah, most Israelis will say achla. 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 Like it, they treat it as if um, as if this were together. Achla. But they recognize that this is a long vowel. Achla. But it really should be broken technically. It's achela. Achela. If you're being precise, it's achela. Uh, okay, so that that one is taken care of. The next one. It looks the same, doesn't it? If you didn't have, you know, that meteg, meteg is the difference here. Meteg here indicates that this vowel, this vowel is long. It's not here indicating anything on this one. So what do we have with this uh, second form? Well, it could be long or short. We're going to take that if it's without meteg, it's short. Because where is it? Where it is? This looks like it closes that syllable. But there's no reason to think it doesn't. So this is going to be short. How do you pronounce that when it's short? Oh. 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 Sort of like a. Kamatskatan is the same as Cholam and Cholam Vav. They're both O. Oh, okay. Hmm. But this consonant is not V, but Kh. Oh, I've done it again, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. 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 Ochla. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, so, Achla means she ate, and Ochla means food. Food. That's the difference between that meteg mark. This is she ate, she ate. And this is food. You see the difference that uh, that one little distinction makes? If it's a long yes. vowel, it's she ate. If it's a short vowel, ochla, it means food. We're going to see in the next, um, in the next chapter, in this chapter, yeah, the next chapter, that we've got the word sevel, means burden, sevel. And there's a an exact... There's a, another word that's built on the same root and means the same thing, sivla, that also means burden, sivla and sevel. So we also have here with ochel and ochla. Ochel, this is the more common word for food, it's sevelet, ochel, and ochla, they mean the same thing, they both mean food. Sevel, sivla, ochel, ochla. Um, okay. Not a big deal, but we'll we'll get into that whenever we come into reading because we'll see words. Don't need to know words right now. We just need to know the division of syllables. Here again, we have this meteg with no meteg here, closed syllable, open syllable. Um, next in line is ward. Would you go ahead and tackle that one? No. It's just like the last one. Right. So this has this first one here. I don't have a pencil, so I'll just talk. <laughs> Oh, and you can use your mouse if you want. Yeah. Right. So this is because of the meteg. That's a open, a long vowel, so it's a closed syllable. Open syllable. And then open syllable. I mean, right. Mm-hmm. And so this one, I guess your rule, it could be open or closed depending on the rule. And this would be the mat. The uh, comments would go with the head here. So it would be uh, Ahema. Ahema. We're going to say that it's it's open. The, the second syllable there, both the second and third, if you break it, uh, second or third. Either way, it's going to be open because the hay vowel, the hay on the end, is not a uh, consonant, it's a vowel. This is a vowel marker. So they're both open. Yeah. Um, remember, remember the definition of an open syllable is that it ends in a vowel, and the definition of a closed syllable is that it ends in a consonant. And this is not a consonant, and there's no consonant after this one either. Uh, even if there were, it, this, if this syllable is one, it doesn't end in a consonant. It just has two consonants forced together. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. But ha ha hema ha hema ha hema ha hema. Yeah, kind of hard to say. This is the the feminine version of Chacham. Chacham means he was wise, and Chachema means she was wise. It's the past tense. She was wise. And so without the meteg, I'm assuming this is going to be a short vowel. So, Chok. Yes, exactly. Chok. Chok. Be a close short. And this would be open. Yeah, Chokma. Chokma is the noun wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is Chokma. It sounds like a wise word. Chokma. Chokma. It's a, it's a nice word. So is this we, that appears in, in Proverbs 8? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anywhere that wisdom appears in the Bible, this is the word for wisdom. Uh, it's a very generic word. Um, that kamatz is o. o. This is what I was saying about, um, about uh, basics of biblical Hebrew, Pratical Van Pelt. I don't have any idea how they could pronounce this as hop, like the ah in hop, and get away with that anywhere. Like it, sa- it would sound so bad in this word, chachma. It's not chachma, it's chochma. That has to be an o. Like, uh, and so, so I think they're misleading people to tell them that uh, the kamatz katan is ah. It's absolutely not. No one, no one would ever say that this is not chokma. It's o chokma, and to say it any other way is a mistake. I don't know why they would write that in their book. It's really, it's bad. <laughs> okay, next. I don't mean to disparage them. They they've got put together an awesome curriculum, and you know they're really good at what they do, but uh, they shouldn't have made that mistake. It, it seems like a silly mistake to make. We're going to look now at Dagesh and how Dagesh plays in uh, in breaking syllables. Okay, um, who was next? I think it's Giovanni. Okay. So yeah, we have a Dagesh here. Sorry, sorry. For Open it. Sonic. Yeah. So this doubles. Mm-hmm. So that's like double S. So that's, uh, and then we have this E. Mm-hmm. So that's E. What? This letter in the middle is not Samet. This is Tet. Tet. Ah, uh, sorry. That's Tet. Mm-hmm. So we've got H. What what does this sound represent? E. E. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. Hit T. Hit T. Hit T. And so how would you according to the textbook, the, the workbook, how do you represent the breaking of the syllables in this word? So they have an interesting uh, this, interesting way uh, to do it. This will since this is a short uh, vowel, mm-hmm. so it takes the one of the uh, the gash here. For, yeah, it takes uh, one one of the texts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It takes one of the tests. So the way that the workbook designates it is instead of drawing it up and down, draw it diagonally. And that means that this tet belongs here and this tet belongs to the next one. Yep. That's that's how they do it. I I think it's an interesting system. um, Yep. Okay, the next, so this chite, chite means he sinned in the past. It's past tense. He sinned. Okay? He sinned like he sinned against God. Um, it's very common to use a vav consecutive form in the Bible. We said that vav consecutive normally is like vai, and then it goes on to the next. So we would expect a dagesh in the yod. Vai ye chate. 
But that Dagesh disappears. Does, do you remember the reason? Does anyone remember the reason why there would the Dagesh would disappear from that yod? Is it because of the, the Shiva? In the, it drops it? It because is of because of Shiva, yes. Skinnam Levi. You remember Skinnam Levi? It was brought up in the last lesson very quickly. No? Yeah. When you have one of the, the letters, that's uh, one of the syllabants, a syllab, uh, the, like Samech, Sin, Shin, Tzadi, Kuf, Nun, Mem, Lamed, Vav, or Yod, that has Shva. If it has Shva, then the Dagesh that's in the letter will tend to disappear. But you said uh, from the previous session that it refuses, refuses, those your words, refuses the, the gesh? Um, that the, that's about the gutturals. Okay. Gutturals refuse the gesh. Um, it's the skinum levy when it's with shva tends to drop the gesh. Drop, okay. It's not that it can't have it, it just tends not to have it. Okay, so you remember Skinnam Levi is Samech, Sin and Shin, uh, Tzadi, these are S. Okay, S. Then Skinnam Levi, it's K, M, M, L, V, Y. Skinnam Levi. One of the sibilants, Kuf, Nun, Mem, Lamed, Vav, Yod. All of these, when they have Shiva underneath, they tend to drop the... Dagesh, if it was supposed to have Dagesh in the pattern. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the pattern is supposed to have Dagesh here, but they, because of the, it's a Yod, it's Skinnam Levi, it drops the Dagesh, and we see instead Va, Ye, Cha, this last one, sorry, Chat, Te. This is a mistake according to, you know, the rules, right? The rules are, we would need to be Va, Ye, Ye, Cha, Te. Okay, it looks like a mistake because this should be Dagesh, but it dropped it, and all we have is Va, Ye, Cha, Te. Va, Ye, Cha, Te means and he sinned. It's the narrative past that we already talked about. Va, Ye, Cha, Te. He sinned. It's, and so is the Skinnam Levy important so that we don't consider this a uh, closed syllable? Yeah. With a because, yeah, exactly. This is not a closed syllable vi. It's not vi. It's, uh, it's as if it's as if the yud were doubled and that continues on. Va yechate. Um, I don't know historically why that happened, but it's very, very, very common. Okay, next. So, chit te, chite, vayechate, vayechate. We don't pronounce the double tet, but you need to know that it's doubled for theoretical reasons. Next. This is exactly like chite, but it's the word he spoke. And we are now on John, please. He spoke. Eric, the Dagash Lene. Mm hmm, Dagash Lene, good. And then another Dagash Lene and uh, Sarai. Well, this one's after a vowel, so it can't be Dagash Lene, it has to be Dagash Forte. Dagesh Lene is only at the beginning of a word or after si silent schwa. It can't be after a vowel. You know what I mean? I mean, is that yeah. familiar so to this, you? This will be another one with a... Yes. Breakthrough. So it will be... The bear. The bear. The bear, he spoke. Die Bär. 
Okay, the same thing. We have the Skinnam Levy loss of Dagesh. So this is just like the previous example. Mm -hmm. Then we. Uh, yes. How would you say this one? By the uh, bear. Vaye da bel, vaye da bel. The shva is uh, uh, it's like the shortest vowel. Vaye da bel, vaye da bel, and he spoke. This is so, 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 so common in the Bible. And God spoke unto Moses, saying, He spoke, vaye da bel Adonai el Moshe le mo. And he spoke to Moses, the, the word spoke. Uh, this is far more common than this. This is like the simple past, Dibel, but the narrative past is the one that's used over and over in the Bible. Vayedaber, and he spoke. Vayedaber, va, ye, da, ber. Vayedaber, and he spoke. Okay, next. And we are back to Ward. I put four words here um, because it's showing different forms. Like this is the regular form of the word. This is the plural. This is the regular form with the article, the, and this is the plural with the article. So I threw them all together. This is just the uh, single syllable with a short vowel. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yes. And do, you, do you have any guess what um means? People. People, yes. Like the people of God. Am Adonai. Am Elohim. The people of God. Am Yisrael. The, the people of Israel. And this would be a break here with a... Uh, now that would be... Well, no, right here. Yes. Why? How? How did you determine that that was problematic? Well, it couldn't be a short, short vowel if mm -hmm. uh, it was a close, an open syllable. There you go. And now you see. Now you see the. That's the. That's the intention of learning with their long or short. You can see where the word breaks uh, because you know that that's a short, a short vowel, and it needs to be a closed syllable. So this would be a uh, meme. Amim. Amim means peoples. Amim. Down here we'd have a uh, ha. I can't see. Somebody's pencil is on top of mine. Uh, Giovanni, can you? There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be the um, ha am. Ha am. The mm -hmm. people. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. If I remember right, that is lacking the uh, Dagesh Forte here. Yes. It, because that's a guttural, so it lengthened this vowel. Yeah, the, the word the, ha, wants to be followed by Dagesh Forte. Uh, but when you have a guttural, the guttural says, no, thank you. I don't want the Dagesh. And instead of the Dagesh, which would be in the middle of the letter, it sends, it makes this vowel long. Okay, so this becomes long instead of patach, it's kamatz, and there is no dagesh. Brilliant. Good. So this should be ha, and then amim, ha amim. Exactly, ha amim, the peoples. Okay, so am, amim, ha am, ha amim, the peoples. Fantastic. And we're back to uh, Giovanni. This time, uh, what I'm demonstrating is the dis distinction that mat makaf makes. This is called makaf. Makaf will join two words. You have this word, and then you have makaf, and you have the next word, and they're together. This word loses, the first word loses its accent and gives it to the next word. So whatever is on this side of the makaf is unaccented. The accent is here. Okay? This, it's the same meaning between both of them. This one is without makaf. This word will have its own accent. And this word will have its own accent. 
but with makaf, this word gives its accent to the next word. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at it. So we have a kaf here with uh, the vowel O, mm -hmm. colon. So that's kol. Kol. Mm -hmm. Kol ha'am. What, if we know that Ha'am means the people, like uh, like the people of Israel, Ha'am, the people, do you have any guess what it might mean, Kol Ha'am? What Kol might mean? Hmm. Let's take its opposite. Let's say it's not some of the people, it's not a few of the people, but it's all the people. All of the people. Kol means all. Okay? okay. It can appear like this with Cholam, or it can appear like this with Kamatz. And this and this are pronounced the same. They both mean all or every. Kol Ha'am. This is Kol Ha'am, all the people. Whenever they received the Torah on Mount Sinai, all the people were at the foot of the mountain. Kol Ha'am. Okay, how would this be distinguished from the second form? I'm sorry, I didn't turn on your pen a minute ago. Yeah, um... Since the, there's a the gesh, uh, I think uh, it drops or it makes uh, possibly the long uh, vowel which turns into a uh, column. Yeah, it drops to a, it reduces to a short vowel. But what causes it? Could we uh, have could we have this form with with makaf? Makaf is the the line the like hyphen. If we had the makaf here. Could we maintain this long vowel? Well, what, what happens? It, it, it becomes an it becomes an unaccented syllable. It becomes unaccented because makaf gives the syllable uh, gives that syllable accent to the next word. So it's unaccented, and it's closed because it ends in lamed. Can it maintain a long vowel and an unaccented closed syllable? No. No, it can't. An unaccented closed syllable must be short. Okay, so this O that is long here drops down here because it's unaccented and becomes kol. But it sounds exactly the same. It's just the short short form of the of the vowel. Kol ha'am, kol ha'am. Giovanni, you got you 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 got that, or does it need some more explanation? Uh, yeah, I think I need more explanation of that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the the whiteboard at the beginning here. <coughs> okay, so the rule for uh, for syllables and and lengths is. In, in this is this applies only to unaccented syllables. Unaccented means not stressed, right? The accent we mark accent like this, the ole. So far, so good. Yeah. Unaccented syllables. Open. Long. That's open. Open syllable. An open syllable has a long vowel. Closed, short. Okay, a closed syllable should have a short vowel. Does this make sense so far? Open, long, closed, short. Yep. Yes. We need to associate those concepts together. Open, long, and closed, short. So if a syllable is like uh, like we said, dibel. Dibel. We have here an accented syllable. It's the last one. All words in Hebrew are accented on the last syllable unless we mark them otherwise. 
Like if we put the accent here, we would say this is Diber. Diber. We don't really like that. It's a Diber. The accent is here. It's on the last syllable. So what we have here is De, I, B. De, I, B. Because this represents two. It's two bets. Second syllable, B, E, R. Two syllables, Dib, Ber. This syllable is unaccented. This one is accented. This unaccented syllable, it begins with a consonant and it ends with a consonant. It's closed. So closed must have a short vowel. This E is short. That's basically what we're looking at with when we have call. This is open. And it's accented. When it's accented, no rule applies. It can have a long vowel. It might have a short vowel on occasion. There's no really there's not really a rule when the syllable is accented. It's only when it's unaccented that this, the, the rule comes into effect. So once we attach it to another word with makaf, this is makaf. When we attach it to the next word, like hayom, the day, that's dagesh in the yod, kol hayom, this is closed and it's unaccented because the accent is shifted there. So it can't have cholam. Do you understand why? It's unaccented and it's closed. Closed means short. Right? So cholam doesn't stand. Instead, it's kamatz. Kol. Kol ha'am. Yeah. I got it. I oh, okay. I sometimes these these concepts are a little bit difficult, and a lot of textbooks just ignore them. Um, it, I mean, Israeli Israeli uh, modern Hebrew textbooks ignore them because uh, people have trouble with them. But it's something that's kind of important for understanding why this is O and not A. Ah. It's not Kal, but it's Kol because this is the same word. Okay, so so just like this is kol ha'am with makaf, this is short and becomes kol ha'am. Can we move on or? Okay. Yep. I don't I don't want to rush you, but it's it's just uh, it's <laughs> kind of something you just have to swallow and and go with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get back to it and then review the video <laughs> later on. Okay. Or for it to stick. Does Does anybody have any suggestion in a way that would be easy to remember it? I, I thought what you did was very clear. Okay, because you you guys are kind of coming at it from a new perspective. Like um, I've been doing this for twenty years, so I don't I don't really know sometimes what's the best way to to approach things. Um, okay, but we'll move on, and you can review review later on. Uh, all right, next. We're looking again at uh, kamats being O. Um, we have now, I think, John. Yes, John, please. Yes. Um. This is a trick, by the way. Yeah, I had that sense it might be. Um. <laughs> This is uh, talked about where they. If, mm -hmm. if one takes the rule that a schwa is a schwa, even if it's composite, mm -hmm. then well, and that's if that's long, then that's silent. And my mouse is right. Oh, your mouse. Sorry, sorry. Getting it. There we go. So if that's the case, then the syllabic break would be there. But I have a sense that may not be right. Looks good to me. Oh, okay. 
So like traditionally, this is how I would break the word. Yes, I don't know what the textbook says. Let me see. But yeah, go ahead okay, and explain. This, this is a silent. It'll just be ma, ma, ma. Okay. Well, the one problem is that this vowel here is not ah. That this is ah, this is a, eh, and this is o. It's uh, the composite oh, is o. I was pretending it was completely silent and just sounding the gamut. Well, so what happens is that this takes the O quality and transfers it to this. So this is also O. That really is a trick. I know. So that ma, ma mad? Mo. Mo. Mo o mad. Mo o mad. Yeah, mo o mad. Um, it's a trick, I know. Um, there's also the word Naomi that they give you in the book, where they show this. Um, they say it's Naomi, Naomi. I read it still as Noomi, Noomi. I don't know why they would say it's Naomi, but uh, just because tradition says that her name is Naomi. But um, I still re we still read it in Israel as no, no omi. Because that's the rule, that this affects that. So it's not na omi, but no omi. Do you know if this Naomi, Naomi tradition is strictly English or... Uh... Um, I would have to check the Septuagint. It might have come from Greek. Uh, but we read it as no omi and mo omad, mo omad. Okay, kind of a tricky one. Next, um, we are at word, please. Okay. Pen. I'm not drawing yet. So the accent is on the first syllable. Mm -hmm. And so that's long, so say. The, uh, ozen? Yes, ozen. ozen. Ozen means ear. No, knowing, the, uh, that this, knowing that this is O, and that's a singular, the plural, it's the same word, the same word, ears. This, this is a uh, closed syllable with a short vowel. Yes. So it would be Oz, Oznaim? Oznaim. Oznaim. And so this syllable is going to break right there too. So it's Oznaim. 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 And this means ears. Oznaim. A lot of these cases, um, you're going to learn how to pronounce a word once you get to know the word. Once you know that Ozen means ear, when you see Oznaim, you're going to know that that's a O. O's name. Okay, great job. Um, Giovanni, next please. This is similar to Ozen O's name. This is the similar idea. Yep, so you have a Kuf, mm -hmm. Resh, and Shin. Not Resh, but Dalit. Dalit, good. So you have uh, accented, so that's a long mm -hmm. vowel. So, Kodesh. Kodesh, where's the syllable break? Uh, oh, sorry, pen. <laughs> I got to remember that. Every slide, got to turn it on. Yes, right Yeah. Okay, so Kodesh. the first syllable is long or short? It's long. Mm -hmm. Is it accented or unaccented? Okay. Is that is it relevant? Is it relevant that it's accented? Because I'm sorry. I want to push you here. <laughs> um. 
Wait, I think I... It's relevant because if this one's accented, what about this one? So we... So every word will have at most one accent, one stressed syllable. So if it's accented here, then it can't be accented here. It must be unaccented, right? And we have a rule about unaccented syllables. Yeah, so for unaccent. Mm -hmm. For unaccented syllables, open, long, closed, Short. Short vowel. Yeah. yeah. So that must be a short vowel, right? We can't have, short for vowel. example, yeah. we can't have tsere in the in the syllable. We can't. It can't be there. Kamats cannot be there unless it's kamats katan. Okay, like the the short vowel. Um, that's why this is relevant. The rule is relevant because it it tells us what vowels can't or can be in an unaccented syllable. So this is long, and this is short. Mm -hmm. And so how do we pronounce it? And do you have any guess in the world what it might mean? First pronounce it again, and then try to guess maybe. Kodesh. Maybe you've heard it. Hmm? Kodesh? Mm -hmm. Kodesh. Uh, yeah. Holy? Holiness, Holy? yes. Kodesh is a noun, holiness. holiness. Mm -hmm. So you've heard of Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of holiness, the Holy yes. Spirit, oh. Kodesh. Holy if spirit. this is O, the first syllable is Ko, what would this one be? This word means His holiness, His holiness. Holiness is here, when you add the O vowel on the end, it means His his holiness. Uh, it's, this, it's going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Breaks here. Uh, mm, can't break there. It's still O because of the... It can't break there. Sorry. Because if it broke there, this is A. Right? If this if it breaks right there, then it's unaccented and open. It must be long. That would be A. Okay. But we know that the vowel is O. So here. So here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this shva is silent, closing the syllable. Right. So basically what happened here, we had an open syllable, kodesh, where this dalit and kuf came together and closed the syllable. And now it's kod. Kod. This is a closed syllable, kod. And then we have the next syllable, which is open and long. Kod sho. Kod sho. Kod sho means His Holiness. Kod sho. Kod sho. So Kodesh Holiness. Kod sho His Holiness. Okay. Kind of clear why this is a closed syllable and that that represents an O sound? Yes. Okay, because it's just like the word kol, like the word kol that we had with makaf. It's the, the exact same situation, unaccented closed syllable, which is O. All right, next, um, John, please. Ah, oh, we just had kodesh and now we have a word that often goes with it. Spirit or breath. Spirit or breath or wind, even wind. Mm -hmm. How'd you say it? Ruach. Ruach, okay. And a trick question, how do you break it into syllables? The mouse isn't writing. Oh, sorry. Go in, yeah. Don't break. Yay, it's one syllable. 
That little ah sound there is not a full vowel. It's called a furtive patach or patach gnuva. It's, a, it's not a full vowel. It's only there to let, help us pronounce it. So it's, it would, in Arabic, be ruh, ruh, but we say ruach. That ah goes before the chet and it's ruach, one syllable, mon monosyllabic. Monosyllabic, okay. But the plural does have two syllables and it is? Uchot. 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 Uchot means winds or spirits. Wind. We must remember that wind is a valid understanding of ruach. It doesn't have to have personality or mind or a will. It can definitely just be a natural occurrence. Um, and that's a that's an issue that comes up in, in translation often. Okay. But ruach HaKodesh obviously has, you know, will and personality. But sometimes you find ruach Elohim and it might not be the spirit of God. It might be something else. Okay. I'm this going also to have to bow out, but I'll be back next week. All right. Thanks so much. You did great. It's a good okay. time. Bye. See you next time. Um, okay. So this one also has the furtive patach. Are you guys doing okay? Like you're feeling uh, pretty well confident? This is good. Yeah, this is really helpful. Giovanni, are you are you surviving? I'm I'm a I'm a pusher. I I, I always have a very long attention span, and <laughs> I I don't suffer with those things. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that, that's okay. I, I mean, uh, I I know I need uh, a lot of work to do here uh, to catch up, but yeah, I'll be sure to spend more time uh, later on on this one. Overall, you're so doing really well. Going. The amount of material that you've been that you've had thrown at you is a lot like, for everybody. Um, so you're doing very well. Um, I don't want you to feel that you're not. There are just little things that you just have to that uh, the nitpicky rules that you that you have to get, and, and that'll come with time. So is this, so, is this, is this probably kind of like big foundation for everything we're going to do from now on? It is. It is. The, the, that's why I'm stressing these rules, because uh, if you read a traditional grammar, they lay out all of these rules before you before you start. And you have no idea why these rules are significant and they just lay them out in, in a list. Um, like if you if you studied with Weingreen's grammar, it's just a headache. But I'm giving a lot of examples so that we can look at how they actually work before we get started. All right, so, so uh, the next word we have, uh, I'll go ahead and tackle this one. It's two syllables. Um, it's ga, voa. This syllable is closed. Why is it closed? Because that, that dot inside, is. it means that the hey here is acting as a consonant. So it's a closed syllable. We're going to ga, this is how we transliterate it. Vo, in this case it's long not. Okay, gavo, ah, gavoa. The accent is on the second syllable. This is one syllable, ga, voa. Again, this furtive patach is not its own vowel. It's just to help pronounce. Gavoa means high or tall. And the plural for gavoa, we can see that the he is definitely a consonant. Gvohim. G, vo, him. This is like if you have two tall buildings, binyanim, gvohim. This is plural, gvohim, high or tall. Two tall men, shne gvarim, gvohim, gvohim, tall. Okay? All right, this is the noun height or, t or um, like if, what is your height? How tall are you? Height. Um, who, do, do, do. Giovanni, you want to tackle it? Yeah. yeah. I, I give it to you because of, because of the Kamats Katana. I want to give it to you because of that one. <laughs> you should be able to, you should be able to draw, I think. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
So divide it here. Mm -hmm. uh, See, that's Gova. Go, Gova. Gova. Yes, Gova means height or, or tallness. It's the same pattern as Kodesh, holiness. This is tallness, Gova. Okay, so which, accent, which syllable is accented? Is it the first syllable is accented? First syllable, accent? yes. Uh huh, and it's indicated with exactly with that little mark. Okay, so is this syllable just looking at it? Is it long or short? Uh, it's long. It's long. Perfect. Yeah, it's long because the uh, olam is a long vowel always. Uh, this syllable is kind of tricky. Long is it open or closed? That's open. Mm, this one has a dot in it. That dot is called mapik. Um, mapik, mapik turns hay into a consonant. Mm -hmm. So it it's, is. Yeah, it's 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 closed. It's closed. It it's so closed. You, have a, you have a short vowel. Okay. Yes. So it's unaccented, and it's a short vowel, according to the rule, right? Because this is a consonant. Because normally when hay is on the end of a word, it represents a vowel, right? But that dot yes, inside it, of it is vowel. telling you this isn't a vowel, it's a consonant. Okay? All right, and here's our fun, like we had Kod Show. Kod Show. His Holiness. Kod Show. Now we have His Height. We have uh, here. Mm hmm. Perfection. Let's go, go who? But this isn't who, it's ho. So the accent is here, right? Go, go ho. Go ho. It's uh, an op it's open syllable, long vowel. Yeah, this is open and long. This is closed and short because it's unaccented. Brilliant. Yes, fantastic. So this is gov ho, gov ho, his height, gov ho. So code show is his holiness, gov ho is his height. Next, we recognize this one straight right when we see it, right? That should jump to your eye already, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the singular form of the plural, just like we had gavoa. Gavoa becomes Gvohim, so we have Elohim coming from this one. Uh, it's, it's your turn, Ward, if you want to break it into syllables and then tell us about it. All right, make this the first syllable here. All right, and I'm and this is a separate, so that's the furtive patah, right? Yep, furtive patah. And so so that means this would just be one syllable. Mm -hmm. Open and or closed? Eloha. Is this so open or closed, this one? This is closed because of the mapik here. Exactly, yes. So e, okay, so, this, so e, we've got the first e, syllable is e, right? Second syllable we have long o, lo. Hello. And then we've got Hello. the AH. The H by itself is a consonant in this case. Eloa. 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 Try not to make this a ch. It's not a chet. It's just a it's a consonantal hey. Eloa. 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 So Eloa. Eloa means God, like a deity. Eloa. And Elohim is uh, also gods, but also like uh, the main deity, principal deity, patron god. It's in the plural because he's the one who has power over your life, can decide yes or no, life or death. So this one's Elohim. Okay, oftentimes the plural is used in Hebrew of someone who has absolute control over you. 
like um, uh, Joseph when he went when he went to Egypt, his master was um, called Adonim. Adonim, plural. Like he would say Adonai Hamitzri, because uh, Potiphar could decide if he lived or died. He was his absolute master. So the im ending is for the the one who can decide if it lives or if it dies, or if he opens or closes, like the Ba'alim is somebody who owns something. You know, if you're the owner of a store, you can decide if the store stays open or if you close it. You have absolute power. So it's Ba'alim. And Elohim has absolute power, so it's im ending. Okay? That makes sense, right? The, in Hebrew, the plural is used for somebody who has absolute power. Hmm. Do you guys mind staying a little bit later, like a few minutes, so we can finish up the slides, or should we? What do you say, Giovanni? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yes, yes. Um, so these two, you can see they have the same vowel patterns. Uh, they're both uh, abstract nouns based on different roots. This root is ga'a, which means pride. Um, so ani ge'e means I am proud. Ge'e. Um, you will see a lot of interchange between hey, vav, and yod. So in this case, the hey is changed to vav. And we have this word ga, a, va. If we're doing the traditional break, this is the regular shva, and it's influencing this and turning it into a. Ga'ava. Ga'ava means pride. It could be dangerous pride. It could be pride goes before destruction. Ga'ava. Ga'a-va. Okay. The second word is uh, related to it in pattern, but aha, it, obviously not in meaning, it's from love. Aha. Va. Ahava means love. Okay, so it's you break the syllable here. Okay, a aha va. This is open, and this one would technically be closed because shva is shva. Remember, right? Pronounce the second one again. Ahava. You still get that little... Ha, va. Ah, va, Okay. Okay. And that, that va is a bet. Remember, bet, the soft is the same as vav in sound. A different letter. This is bet and this is vav. This is v. This is bet underlined. Correct? Next. <laughs> Um, how did who did we have last? El, okay, that was uh, that was Ward. So Giovanni, next. This is looking at the effect of the dagesh closing the syllable and having a short vowel in front of it. Okay. You can just just take the first one. That's I think that's enough. Just this one. Mm -hmm. Well, remember that Dagesh. Remember what Dagesh does. It doubles. It doubles. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Perfect. Okay. So the first syllable, what is that? That's okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds perfect. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have the Aleph with the kibbutz. Mm -hmm. Just... Kibbutz is like a, almost like a short shuruk. It's U, right? Yeah. Ooh. That's gay. Ooh. 
Geula. Geula, yes, yes. This means redemption. Redemption. Geula. Accent on the end. Geula. This word is the same kind of pattern. It's te fil la. Te fil la means prayer. Prayer. These are very common religious words, right? Geula, redemption. Te fil la, prayer. Okay, next. Ah, oh, that's the same. Did I make two of the same slide? 22, 23, they're the same. Sorry about that. Okay, um, this looks at the stress and how it affects syllable break and long and short vowels. Okay, uh, Ward, go ahead with both of the words if you don't mind. They are pretty easy okay. compared to what we've done so far. Don't have a pencil yet. But oh, sorry, that thing just gets me every time. <laughs> so, the long vowel. No, there's a short vowel, but an open open syllable. Open. Uh -huh. Why why does that matter? Why is it relevant? So an accented syllable can be either short or long vowel. Yes, that's exactly the point. The accent, once the accent is there, there is no rule. This is a closed syllable that has a short vowel then. Because that, that syllable is, if the one is accented, then this one is has to be open or closed. It has to be unaccented. If one this is, is open, accented, the other has to be unaccented. Unaccented, right. Yeah. And it, right. in unaccented syllables, we have a rule that if it's closed, it's short. Okay. So, so how would you yachad. pronounce this word? Yes, good. Yachad. Yachad. Yachad, mm -hmm. yachad is like togetherness. It's like being together. Yachad. So I would say this is the uh, still it's the uh, unaccented but oh so it's an hmm. unaccented syllable and it is open so the rule is mm -hmm. unaccented open would be a long vowel yes mm -hmm. so it would be Yahid. 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 Yahid means Yahid means only, like only one. Yahid. This is interesting because Yahad and Yahid look like they're from the same root, but they don't have a, they don't have a shared meaning. Yahad means together and Yahid means only. Like the only one. Uh, they really aren't related. Yahid probably comes from the word echad, meaning one probably derived from Echad and not from Yachad. But that's just an interesting pairing. Okay, next. This is an actual verse from the Bible. Woohoo! So I want to break it into syllables just like we've done with individual words and then look at how we understand it and how it is read. Um, I did the recording of Genesis chapter 1 where it says that God saw the light that it was good. Um, it says, Vayal Elohim et haor ki tov. It's exactly the same expression here. Ki tov. That it was good. We're going to look at this. This is ho du with the accent here. This is the word Adonai. It's God's name. We're going to ignore the spelling because the spelling doesn't matter and just read it Adonai. So, Hodu Ladonai. Did you read about the Tetragrammaton? We read this as Adonai, even though it's written Yud Hei Vav Hei. Hodu Ladonai yes. Ki Tov. Ki is, it, is its own word, so it's like an accented syllable, and it's long. Tov is its own word, therefore it's accented and it's long. Okay, Hodu Ladunai Ki Tov. Ki again is by itself. Ki means because or for or that. Hodu, give thanks. Give thanks to Adonai. Give thanks to Adonai because good. He is good. Or you might say it is good. It is good to give thanks to God. 
give thanks to God for it is good or he is good. Ki, because, le, o, lam, le, o, lam means forever. Okay, le, o, lam. And then a word that we saw before, chas, do. Le olam chas do. His love is forever. So give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for forever is his love. Hodu ladonai kitov ki le olam chas do. Le olam, eternal, forever. Olam means age. Olam is age, like an age in the in the universe, an age, time. And le olam is for the age or forever. Okay, do you want to try to read this uh, verse? It's, it's kind of simple. Can you explain this word here? I'm oh, sorry, let's get your pen up there. Yep. This word yeah. here? Mm -hmm. This word is chesed. We covered it on one of the slides. But, uh, chesed means oh, that's right. I got it. mercy or loving got kindness. It. And so once you put the O on there, his, this syllable closes and you get chas do. Chas do like koncho, his holiness. So it's his mercy. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his loving kindness is forever. Um, you want to go ahead and take a stab at it, Ward? Hodu, Hodu, Laurunai, Kitov, I, Laolam. What's this vowel here? Not La Olam, but Le Olam. Le. Le Olam, Hasdo. Yes. Ki Le Olam, Hasdo. Uh, do you want to try it, Giovanni? Yep. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hodu la Adonai kitov ki leolam hasdo. Yeah. This word here, just re there's no ye on the beginning, just hodu. Hodu la Adonai kitov hodu. ki leolam hasdo. The chapter where this comes from has this phrase again and again and again. For his love endures forever. For his love endures forever. It, it will change the first line in each verse, and then the second line in each verse is his love endures forever. It's a really nice, uh, nice passage in the Psalms. All right, number which, two. Which psalm, which psalm is that? Um, I'll, I can search for it. Just a second. What? I'm looking for it. Just one second. You can send it to us later. It'll be fine. It's Psalm 136, I guess. Let's check. There are a couple of them, so let's see. Yeah, um, at the beginning of Psalm 118, it has several of them, and Psalm 136 is the one where it's every verse ends that way. Um, I'll send it in the public chat. There you go. All right, fantastic. Next, I think, is the whiteboard, and then Todalachem, which is, means thank you. Thanks to you. Um, on the whiteboard, if you want to practice or ask any questions, I think uh, we can take a couple of minutes and then we'll we'll close out. Um, do we need to review a little bit about the O vowel or like O is the same as O on top of a letter, right? Which is the same as O and O. They all sound the same. Hebrew has pure vowels. O is O. So,
This means call Hasman all the time. Call Hasman all the time. Call. This is the most common word with that O sound. Call le this is metig this one that I wrote right there is metig call levavecha call levavecha this means all your heart call levavecha the word for heart is levav. Levav, heart. So levavecha, the first syllable reduces to shba. Levavecha, your heart. Levavecha. Kol levavecha, all your heart. Um, in the second reading passage that we have, we're going to say, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your excess, all your strength. Um, that's kol levavecha, kol nafshecha. Nafshecha is nefesh. Nefesh means soul. Nefesh. Kol levavecha. Um, most of the time, that's where you're going to see that O sound right there. This is kol, means all. Okay? This is the most common O. It's very, we see it many times with kod she, my holiness, kod show, his holiness. Um, these are really the words that are most common with the O, that O sound. Okay? Apart from that, 90% of the time, at least, the kamatz is a. Ah. All right. Have I preached enough? <laughs> it's good practice. Is there is there anything that I, that I should clarify before we go on? Before we like let go and you know, go to our next unit? I think for me, I'm, I'll try practicing reading some of this stuff, and I probably will have some questions next week. That would be fantastic. I would love if you yeah, could ask too. ask questions on the on the forum on the Moodle. There's um, there's an interactive forum for questions of any type. The next chapter is about um, the endings for for feminine and for plurals. Uh, basically, basically, it's going to talk about them in a generic way, not getting into specific forms, but looking at the definite article, the the word the, ha, with dagesh after it. Okay, it's uh, this is the word the, and it's going to look at the different ways that it's affected if dagesh is rejected and it becomes ha or whatever. Remember, the gutturals reject dagesh. It's also going to look at the forms that Vav takes when it means and. We would think normally it's V with Shva, but there are a lot of situations where it's not. We see in in uh, the book of Genesis, Tohu, Vavohu. This is chaos and void. Tohu, vavohu, where the vav takes a, an ah sound. This is this is not the normal pointing of vav. It's kamat because it, it's right in front of an accented syllable, so it likes to to become long itself. Um, but tohu, vavohu is a fixed expression. Tohu, vavohu. Since it's a fixed expression, it also exists in the book of Jeremiah. It means um, that it's chaos and void, like um, desolation, 
Like there are no people, there's no life. It's just a big mess. Um, but that's a fixed expression that also appears in Genesis whenever the, when we see the creation. That the earth was tohu and devohu. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, that's basically what it looks like. It looks at in the next chapter. The, the forms of Vav and the definite article. And it continues with just getting a little bit of reading practice in before we start the real chapter. So... Um, for next chapter, for the next encounter, we've got the definite article. We've got uh, Vav conjunction. The word and. We're going to see later on it has a lot more meanings than just and, but that's uh, the basic meaning. And you need to memorize vocabulary. This is the first chapter where you're actually getting words that you need to start to memorize. Um, they're at the beginning of chapter 4. In the workbook, this is page page 81. There's a list of vocabulary in the workbook that you need to start memorizing for reading chapter four. Uh, the way that the book presents, it gives you the vocabulary the chapter before and then the reading the chapter after. So we're in chapter three uh, after this encounter. Start memorizing those vocabulary at the top of page 81. I've put together the Quizlet so you can uh, use it for flashcards uh, to practice. And then that will get you ready for reading in Chapter 4, and we're going to start reading already. Um, there is one more thing. Our daily readings start now. That's why I put together the reading practice for or the, the reading video for, um, for the Genesis 1, 1 through 5. I'm going to put together the one for Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, and you can go ahead and start repeating those every day. This is something they say Sunday through Thursday, every day, take time to uh, to read those passages. Because the more you do, the better you get. The better you get, the, the more you feel you've had success and you will remember Hebrew. Uh, and that's our goal. So uh, I hope it's been useful. I think we've worn out our time. We've got about 20 minutes over. Hopefully next time we'll keep it a little bit shorter. But I thought we should probably finish out all of the slides. You guys did a good job. I'm glad to be with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. Bye.